Hey everyone, I'm going to take some time here to explain what you need to do to complete project part two, right? This is a, a pretty significant step in the process to get to the rough draft of your research paper. You're laying a lot of really important groundwork here in project part two, okay? So I'm going to share the screen and we are going to take a look at project part two. Okay. All right. So obviously all of this information up here, pretty self-explanatory. It just says that you need to have gone through all of the lessons in weeks one through four. You kind of had to anyway, just to be able to access project part two, right? You also need to have understood the lessons from weeks one through four. So if you are at this point, to start working on project part two. And there is anything from weeks one through four, thesis statements, introductions, paragraph development, conclusions, um, getting started with research, avoiding plagiarism, um, APA format basics, reference entries, any of those lessons from weeks one through four, if you are still unclear about anything, stop what you're doing and reach out to me, right? Then after we talk, Hopefully you'll have a better understanding of that topic, and then you can come back and complete project part two, okay? This is gonna be in a Word document. Obviously I'm showing it to you here. You can create your own Word document in this format, but it'd probably be easier to just use the attachment um, that I've provided here in the instructions because um, it's already set up for you, all right? Um, remember, this is mandatory. Project part two is mandatory. You will have to submit it and receive my feedback on it in order to move forward when it's time to work on project part three, okay? All right, so project part two is all about your thesis and your support, all right? Hopefully you've been finding your sources. Maybe you're still looking, you know, that's fine. Um, this is the week though, where you're gonna have to make some decisions and you're gonna need to decide what your narrowed focus is for your topic, okay? Step one is all about your main points, okay? What are the main points that you are gonna discuss in your essay? These are gonna be your body paragraphs, right? What is the, the main portion of your essay gonna focus on? For example, let's say you chose the topic, what are the causes and or effects of nursing burnout? Okay, if you decided you're going to focus on just the causes, what three specific causes are you going to focus on in your essay? And it doesn't have to be just three. You'll see here, so it's add additional lines above if you think you'll have more than three main points. I wouldn't go more than four, though, because you don't want the essay to get super long, but you have to develop each main point thoroughly. So if you've got four main points that you have developed thoroughly the way you're supposed to, then you're getting into an essay that's longer than what I'm asking for, basically. Um, so three is kind of the magic number. I'm okay with four main points though, okay? So going back to that example, if you chose what are the causes and or effects of nursing burnout, did you decide to go with causes? Are you focusing on just causes? If so, which specific causes are you gonna focus on in this essay? Write them on these lines. For instance, one cause of nursing burnout is long hours. Another cause of nursing burnout is, um, you know, being emotionally drained from patient care, like dealing with high acuity patients or, um, you know, um, death, you know, depending on what type of nursing area you're looking at. A third cause might be lack of support from management, okay? So those would be your three main points. Those are the three specific causes you have decided to discuss in your essay, because you can't cover all the causes of nursing burnout. Then we get into a really long paper. Again, because you have to develop and explain each main point fully, okay? If you decided to focus on the effects of nursing burnout, 
what three specific effects are you going to focus on in this essay? If you decided to look at causes and effects, you're going to need four main points, right? Two causes, two effects, basically what you would want to do in this exact situation. If you chose, does inadequate nurse staffing put patients at risk? If you chose that topic, what specific risks are you going to focus on, right? Risks to patients, right? So maybe you're going to look at, you know, when there aren't enough nurses on staff, patients are at a higher risk of falls. They are at a higher risk of infection. And they are at a higher risk of medication errors, right? Those are your three main points. That's what you're going to write on these lines, right? So if you haven't decided on your main points yet, you're going to need to before you complete project part two. Step two is to state your working thesis statement. Go back to week one and review the lesson on thesis statements so that you remember the rules, what can and can't be a thesis statement, and what a thesis statement is supposed to do. It is supposed to state your narrow topic and your main points. So the causes, three causes of nursing burnout are long hours, high acuity patients, and lack of support. That's your thesis statement. Inadequate nurse staffing puts patients at risk, especially for falls, infections, and medication errors. That's your thesis statement, okay? So whatever you wrote up here on these lines in step one, your main points, needs to be here in your thesis statement too, because that's what a thesis statement does. It states the narrowed focus and previews the main points that the essay will focus on. So if you did this step, if you did step one correctly, you already have half the work done for you here in step two. Now you just need to word it one single grammatically correct sentence. Word it as a thesis statement, okay? Step three is your support, meaning your sources. Most of your support for each of your main points is going to come from your own ideas, right? Remember, we want 80% original ideas, 20% from sources. Each main point should use a source. Now, it's possible that a source that you use for your first main point might also be used for your third main point. That's fine. You, you, don't, you, can, you can use your sources in multiple sections but you should have at least one source in each section, okay? You wanna make sure that you are thinking about how to use sources effectively. If you use a source in your introductory paragraph, which you really shouldn't, but sometimes it works out okay, don't count that as one of the times you've used your source because the sources are supposed to be to support the main points, right? Who cares if you used a source up in your introductory paragraph? Did that really do anything for the paper? Did it really help support your ideas and convince me that you know what you're talking about? Go ahead, use it up in the intro if you, if you really feel the need, but don't think that that means now you don't have to use any other sources in the body of your essay. Okay, use your sources to help explain and support your main points. Okay, your ideas about those main points. Choose information from your sources that helps explain your ideas. Don't use random quotes. Don't use something that doesn't really mean anything or add anything to the essay. Use your sources to help you explain yourself, okay? You need at least three. You can have more than three. I wouldn't have more than five though for a shorter paper like this. Um, if you have more than five, then you're running the risk of overusing source material. Um, 
it's not impossible to have more than five, but just as a guideline, you need at least three. Try to do no more than five, okay? What you're gonna do with these sources, here on this table, it shows you. So for your first source, you are going to create an APA reference entry here in this box. Not the citation, not what's gonna go in the parentheses in the body of the essay, but the reference entry, how it will look on your reference page at the end of your essay. That's why going through the reference entries lesson in week four was, was so important. That's why it's required in order to access project part two, because you're gonna be, ex you're expected to create a reference entry for each source here in this assignment. So what is the reference entry for source, your first source? Now, do your best. If you just give me a website, like a URL, www.webmd.com, nope, that doesn't, that's not right. You have to at least try to get it in the correct format. If it's not 100% correct, that's okay. But you have to at least try to get it in the correct format here. Most of the types of sources that you guys are going to use, that you're going to find, I cover in that lesson and I show you exactly how to do the reference entry for that type of source. I go through numerous types of sources, right? Don't forget that. You can go back to that PowerPoint, look for the type of source, and look at how I created the entry for it. So APA reference entry in the first box. Then in this box, you're going to give me a brief summary of that source. We've learned by now that a summary only covers the main ideas of a source. When we don't really care about all of the details. It's a summary, the main idea. Then in this box, your reasons for using this source. Which of your main points does this source go with? Tell me, <laughs> be specific. This source will be used to support my second main point about blah, 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 right? What specific information do you plan to use from this source? You don't have to like copy and paste anything here. Just tell me there's a section in this article that discusses this specific risk that patients experience when there aren't enough nurses, but, you know? Like, I'm going to use a quote from this person, right? What specific information do you plan to use from this source? So, again, APA reference entry, summary, why are you, why are, what are you using it for? How does it fit into your essay? What main point, what specific information are you going to use from it? Okay. And then, same thing for source number two on the next page. Same thing for source number three on the next page. If you have more than three sources, you can um, add a page or, you know, just down here. You don't have to create a whole new table if that's not something that you're really adept at, but you at least have to give me the same information for those additional sources. So if you have a fourth source somewhere down here, give me the APA reference entry, provide a summary and tell me what your reasons are for using it and what specific specific information you're going to use from it. Okay. Doesn't have to be in table form. And then finally, step four, potential problems and concerns. Again, you are working on your thesis statement, thinking about your main points, gathering your sources, thinking about the information you're going to use from each source. You know the next step of this project is the rough draft. It gets assigned in week six. What problems or concerns do you have at this point, right? Questions for me, even, possibly. Um, you know, are you looking for specific advice? What, whatever I can help with. Step four is your chance to sort of voice those worries and possibly get some additional help from me, okay? All right, try to have this in by Sunday night. Um, I'll be looking through them during week five, giving you feedback, right? Remember um, our late work policy here, you can get it in by the end of week five. It won't count as late. 
Um, after that, then I start taking a percentage of points off. Um, and these project parts are worth a pretty significant portion of your overall grade. Uh, so you do want to get full credit, and you will get full credit if you complete each step in full, the way as instructed. Okay. If you get points taken off because you didn't fully complete one of the steps, you'll get a chance to resubmit it, of course, right? But I'm not grading, like I'm not looking at your main points and saying, oh, those aren't good, I'm gonna take points off. Or your working thesis statement really isn't correct yet, I'm gonna take points off. Your APA reference entry isn't correct, I'm gonna take points off. That's not really what I'm talking about here. Um, if you haven't even attempted to do it the right way, then I might send it back to you and say, you really need to put more effort into this before I can grade it. But if you've tried and you've completed each step in full, you'll get full points for it, you'll get my feedback, and that feedback will be immensely helpful as you start thinking about the rough draft, okay? All right, so if you have any questions, run into any problems whatsoever, please reach out right away. This is, again, it's a really important step of our course project process here. And I wanna make sure everybody is understanding what they need to understand and, and preparing themselves as much as possible. And that's really what I want you to think about through all this. Yes, you have to submit it because it's an assignment and you're gonna you know, get my feedback on it, but I really want you to see why I have you do project part two this way in the first place. It's not for me, it's for you to keep you on track, right? To, to help you have a foundation here in week four so that in two weeks when you have to do the rough draft, you're not flailing, you're not lost. You have a game plan in place. You have received advice and suggestions from me by that time. Okay, this is really it's all to help you use it to your advantage. Okay. All right, but I'm here if you have questions or run into any problems. Okay.